All right, hello everyone, my name is Shen. Welcome back to the Butcher Circus, and today we are going to be playing against Goodnight Yoshi, and Goodnight Yoshi is actually playing none other than the wall. Well, actually not the wall from the base game, but it is the Butcher Circus wall. So it's a leper which is going to have 80% prod, so that's going to be pretty fun. But I do have Pierce here with my Shield Breaker, but even though I have Pierce, I do not have the greatest of teams. Because today I am playing Mark Occultist without an Arbalist. Because if you play it with Arbalist, it's almost as good as other Mark teams. So I didn't want it to be quite like that, so we are not doing that today. I could have gone for a pull on the Houndmaster first, just to prevent the block of light, but... Honestly, I think I'm gonna do zero damage anyway. I'm just gonna have to kind of DOT them out or go with, uh, <laughs> with the armor piercing or else this is gonna be really, really rough for me, but... Well, we, we, we're gonna try anyway, right? Well, I might be going for a sacrificial stab here. I don't do that much damage. This this does do stress, but uh, at least it does a little bit. I, don't worry, I'm looking at the torch. I know when it's going to run out, and I know when it, when it won't run out, but... Let's go over the team and the trinkets and the idea behind everything. Well, I have a shield breaker here because without a crusader or an abomination, you need something to break the card, and the shield breaker just works well as kind of this character to go with weird teams, so she's here with the double dodge, and hopefully she can be very tanky and also uh, break the, the, the opponent's tankiness. We have the occultist, of course, for the stab with sacrificial Chris and eagle eye talisman. I kind of wish I had the monkey spawn, but since I already have monkey spawned another character, I wasn't really able to do that. And I'm gonna go for the Hound's Rush. I do 15, which isn't too bad. Arbalst would have probably gotten a crit for 33 or something of the like, so Arbalst definitely would have been better there, but what can you do about it, right? Uh, yeah, we do have the Eagle Eye Talisman, which is still giving us 10 dodge, so it's gonna make our stab a little bit better. Not in a situation like this, but in other situations. So right now I can go for a Puncture here, which I will. I gotta focus this Crusader down, because this is really Yoshi's only source of healing. So if I take him out, the only other heals are limited, which are the Lick Wounds and the Solemnity. And oh, that is actually really bad for, for Yoshi, because I totally forgot. Yeah, Leper sucks. Yeah, Intimidate Leper might be very tanky, but one of the biggest reasons it sucks is because you can't even use it from position 2. It's just a very, very sorry ability. Well, another good thing about this team is that you can actually Hounds Rush into position 1, so you might not hurt quite as much as a... Arbalest would, but at least you can hit position 1, so that's quite nice. I do like the the doggy in the back for Mark teams. I don't think he's extremely competent, I don't think he's meta or anything, but he definitely has some uses. Being able to use, hit position 1, also having some DOT with the Hounds area and the Hounds Rush, kind of being able to counter some regen is, is quite nice. And while he's not good against protection with uh, actual damage, he can he can kind of surprise people with, with his damage output. So right now I am going to go for a Sacrificial Stab, I'm not sure if it's going to do enough, it doesn't, but with the DOT the Crusader will be going down to zero, so in a way it was enough. And since I didn't go first, I... wait, did I go first? No, I did go first, so I can't really wait the action out. Well, that's quite sad, but uh, that's just the way the Butcher Circus is. Well, should I go Harvest? Yeah, let's go Harvest, let's do some DOT here. There isn't Withstand, so... My chance of actually getting a bleed isn't too bright, but we do get it anyway, so that's that's quite good. That is bleeding away at the sniper, and that's exactly what we want. Of course, the DOT wouldn't really do too much, because Yoshi wouldn't misplay. Yoshi would <laughs> click the leper and then go for the heal, but since you've done this, then that means that your Crusader is probably going down, but I roll for 5 on the 5 to 9. Well, isn't that wonderful? Shieldbreaker, the character that's supposed to Break the protection rolls for a 5 because of only two Bella Divas, essentially prolonging Yoshi's lifespan. Not very cool if you ask me, but what can you do about it? You just gotta accept it. Well, speaking of accepting it, I could go for a stab here. Do you do damage? No, you don't. Well, I guess I'm gonna stab then. The crit chance is good as well, I guess. And yeah, that is a stab going through there on the Crusader. So the guards really suck against this team because Dirk stab, a Harvest even. There's also guard break obviously and Hunt's area as well. 
So guarding really doesn't accomplish too much for you. I'm going to go for the Hound's Rush now. Should do more than enough damage. Yeah, 8 to 16. Even with uh, how many battle debuffs? Just one. We are perfectly fine. Another positive about the Hound Master when compared to the Arbals is your resistances. Not in terms of move resistance, because that one isn't too good. Or the Bleed Trans either, but in terms of... <laughs> look at that move. In terms of mostly your debuff trans, it's 45 rather than 10, which means you don't... You, you still don't have Flare to clear the debuffs, but you have something that's potentially better, which is just resisting them. So we're gonna go for a Puncture here. We do get a crit, but we do not get the pull, which is a little sad, but that, that is also a guard break. And you might be wondering, well, Shep, why did you go for the guard break? Don't you just have to accept go for it immediately? Well, yes, I do, but here's a problem with that. My Dirk Stab kill shot isn't guaranteed. It's far from guaranteed, actually. I'm gonna go for a 57 here, which is greedy, but the reason I go for it is because I want to bleed on the doggy. It's gonna be very helpful to me, and because I still have a Dirk Stab by the start of the next round. So even if I fail the 57, next round I will get what is an 82, I believe. So to fail an 82 would be just too ridiculous, right? No, it isn't. You can definitely fail 82s. <laughs> it's happened to me before. Don't let it happen to you. Alright, I could go for a stab here, but my hit chance is an 83. Ah, screw it. That's a nice stab. Okay, that's your dopamine for the video. That's... Hopefully people are satisfied with, <laughs> with the market cultist already. I'm, I honestly don't mind playing him too much. There's definitely strategies I don't like playing at all. Uh, like, I play some weaker strategies, right? But there's some weak strategies that just suck to play, especially because of matchups. And yeah, this, um, this isn't really one of them, I'll say. Leopard is definitely one of them, because getting pulled behind you, just making you totally useless from every position but one is horrible. But back into the match, I do have three damage debuffs on me right now, which isn't too good. I'm doing 3 to 6 damage. I should have exposed there, but I was running out of time, so nah, it's alright. It is alright. Just doing 4 damage to the Leper, completely bypassing the prod, but since your base damage with the Shieldbreaker is kind of meh, and considering that Pierce actually has a damage debuff for some bizarre reason, or not a debuff, but a, a minus damage mod, it means that with damage debuffs on you, you're, you're basically just gonna have a horrible time. Uh, actually doing damage, even if the characters don't really have... Uh, even if the characters have a lot of protection, right? And you can ignore it. So here we just drop the Hound's area, just gonna do some DOT to the enemy characters, nothing wrong with it. With the attack whistle on this doggy, you have a 130% bleed skill chance with the Hound's area, which is really freaking good. And on the Hound's rush, it's still a 120, so that's not too bad. My opponent here just decide to do that. I have to harvest uh, accuracy, which isn't good, but I have finisher, monkey spawn, and battle bout. So even with the decent 42 dodge, I can just kind of just break through it and keep this doggy in check. And eventually, I'll be able to drop a finale here. The thing is, uh, the most preoccupying thing here is the fact that ah, it's going to take me ages to kill the slipper, and that, that's just a fact with the battle debuffs and all that. I'm getting afflicted very, very soon. So taking the leper out <laughs> isn't going to be too easy at all. But hopefully I can do it. I go paranoid as well, so that's minus damage. Lovely, absolutely lovely. I only have minus 20% damage now, so yeah, we do get a big pierce in there. That, that's nice. If I had I gone exposed the previous round, this pierce would have been a pretty likely crit. So that's definitely what I should have gone for. But we don't get punished for it anyway, because there is no justice in this world. But yeah, the Leper is already at less than half his HP, so he's going to be having to drop a, a Solemnity soon here. And I am quite happy about it. He really hasn't done too much here. I mean, damage debuffs don't really matter all that much against this team, because you still have DOT to go along with it, and you can see that we're still breaking through our opponent's defenses relatively well here. So there goes the Irrational, and the Doggy decides to not heal, which is a bit of a weird one, but... I respect it, just going straight out with the Hound's Harry. And I tried to do the same thing, but I forgot that because I've been getting unlucky with the debuffs, I actually don't do damage to the dog. Isn't that fun? Hmm. No, there's going to be a preemptive solemnity here. It doesn't get a crit on it, thankfully. And I guess I'm just going to go for a stab or not. First turn act out, my favorites. 
and Paranoid doesn't get an act out, but I'm gonna go Dirk Snap here. This is the moment where you go Dirk Snap and not Harvest, because you definitely want to prevent your opponent from getting another Hounds area off or something of the likes. Of course. And I'm also getting ready for a finale, even though it's gonna do like... We're gonna see how much damage it does against the Leper. I'm gonna bet that it will do... If this debuff applies... Oh, it applied. Yeah, it's gonna do like... Three to five. That's that's my estimate. Let's see. Wow, I guessed it. Absolutely guessed it. Okay, good job, Chef. I, I am a good guesser at this. And on the Mender Arm should do a lot more. Yeah, 8 to 14, that's not too bad. Well, I guess I'm just gonna keep spamming Harvest. Doesn't really matter that you have a lot of a lot of armor when when I can just bleed through it. It's really, really quite good. I feel like this team that you actually had here would be good if instead of a Lamper it had a Vatulant or something like that, with Suffer, Reclaim, you know. And maybe instead of a Crusader in there, you would put an Arbalest at the back and have another support character, which is a little bit better than Crusader. And even though Crusader is quite good, he's quite weak to getting disrupted in the, in the stress teams. I feel like there's better alternatives. So yeah, right now, how do I want to approach this? What is the best way? Well, I'm gonna go for an expose here. Not all is one, let's be honest here. Like, I have three afflictions right now, and there's still another solemnity heal. So it's not looking... It's not looking like a, like a confirmed win. That's what I'm trying to say here. I could... How many debuffs do I have? I have minus 93% damage, but I am abusive. So I have a bit of false damage. You know what? I'm actually gonna go vulnerability hacks, because three to five is worthless. But the stress, the stress could actually make a difference. I might just get a heart attack on this man at arms here. Yeah, this is a really, really neat team that I've made here. Because you have so many tools at your disposal. You have a lot of damage. You have a lot of stress, if you want to do that as well. And you also have a lot of DOT. You literally have everything on this team. You also have kill pressure, you have guard breaks. You don't really have a lot of healing, but the healing that you do have is quite good with the occultist. Uh, with Decision Embrace, it could come in really, really clutch against something like a, a Mark team. And with Reconstruction, you know, Assault Machine, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. I'm thinking of actually just dropping another Vulnerability Hex here and just getting the kill with, um, with an Affliction. And it looks like we're gonna do exactly that. Keep in mind that with the Sacrificial Crest, you do plus 25% stress versus Marked. Which means that if you go vulnerability hacks on a character that's marked while well, you have the Chris, for some reason you're gonna do insane amounts of stress. It, it is weird, definitely, how Chris would impact vulnerability hacks, but it does, and that's really, really quite good for us. Okay, I could just go for a Hound Sari here. The reason I'll go Hound Sari is because there's plus crits received, so my crit chance is at 35. But I do not get it, sadly. I would have I would have loved to get a crit there. It would have completely knocked that man arms out. But since we didn't get it, then I'm gonna just have to drop and expose. And yeah, he's he's gone. He's he's way gone. Okay, let's see. With the this amount of damage, paranoid damage debuffs, and 80 prod, how much damage do I think I'm doing? Honestly, I still vote on three to five. Oh, three to six. Okay, it's a little better than three to five. I do zero on the Dirk Stab. Yes, epic stuff. If I didn't have any DOT or or Pierce or Stress moves, well, if you didn't have any damage moves, I mean, any good moves, then the Leper would stay alive forever. Yeah, pretty much. That doesn't make too much sense, but it is the way it is. It is how it is. And let's see, Pierce is doing 6 to 11. I do 11. Nice. And Hound's Rush still shouldn't be doing too much damage, there's still a lot of debuffs on me. And Intimidate is quite a nice debuff, but... 1 to 2 or 0. I'd rather do 0 and get an Affliction, honestly. I think that's just overall a bit better for me in this, in this, in this situation. And Irrational, perfect. That is the absolute worst. Okay, and now Paranoid, let's see, do you have enough for the finale? Yeah, not even with a crit. Let's keep going with for the Dirk Stab. We actually get a crit for one. Good job. Good job, Jester. You're doing amazing. Not. Uh, I, I hope that Pierce gets a crit so I can actually just get this match through. Yoshi is not the kind of person to surrender. Oh, I wish I had Arbals. I could shoot now. No crit. Okay, thank goodness. No crits. And I will go for the Hound's Rush first. 
I have basically normal damage and yeah, the protection. You have nothing to deal with the protection apart from the bleeds. Your base damage is just not going to do anything. I'm going to go Pierce. I want to get a kill with Finale. I want to finish the match with Finale. That's what I'm going for here. I'm going to go for the Harvest because we can potentially get a bleed. And yeah, that's definitely going to help. I'm going to go for the Finale after this. I don't have any damage debuffs on me. Unless Leper goes for an Intimidate. Please don't. Please don't. Oh, god damn it. Don't, don't get the debuff. I have debuff res. Yes, there we go. Should I go for the finale already? Do I have enough damage? I don't have any damage debuffs on me. Hmm. Do I have enough? I mean, I do have the Affliction, so probably not. I'm gonna go Expose first, and then I'm gonna get more crit chance, so it's it's definitely gonna be a crit, right? I'm gonna go for the J-Man finale. Come on, J-Man finale, 4 weight, 37% crit chance, and bam, disappointing. How disappointing of you, Jester. How disappointing, yeah. You are indeed a lawbreaker. There is absolutely no just in this world, but now we're just gonna take the sniper out. It's gonna be very, very fast. He's gonna he's gonna take my Jester out, but it won't be it won't be lasting too much longer after that, I'll say. Irrational goes for the purge. Misses the purge. That's not something you see every day. And now with a move, or maybe two moves, or maybe even three moves, he'll be Absolutely gone. Did we fail the debuff? I think we did. I'm gonna Hound's Rush just so I don't do zero damage with the Harry, of course. And now Dirk Stab should be the straw that broke the camel's back. And yeah, GG to Yoshi, and let's go on for a match number two with this team. Alright, and here we go for a match number two. So we're playing against Goodnight Yoshi once again, and this is a team that. Uh, is made to counter WD, at least that's the idea behind it. I helped him build it, and he used it to counter my WD, so, you know, it, it did its job. Now, he is playing it a little bit differently, so I'm already kind of grumbling, but the Houndmaster has Attack, Whistle, and Crimson Hook instead of the, the things he had before. I have no idea why Mender Arms has Retribution, you should not have Retribution, you should have Command, but that's it's okay. It maybe won't make too much of a difference, but considering the dodge I have, uh, it might, it might. I do think that to counter WD, double dodge Houndmaster is really annoying to deal with, so you should absolutely run that if you can. So right now, whatever you do, the flagellant can clear it, so I guess I'm still gonna go for the stab. I definitely have to focus the doggy down here, no matter what. I do have a shield breaker, so I'm capable of doing it, even with... Uh, with suffers and guards and all the nasty stuff. I'm a bit surprised by the Bellow instead of the Hounds Rush. It's a bit weird. Also surprised by the immediate Hounds Harry. But now I'm gonna go for my own Rush. And I do not get quite enough damage, but I'm not gonna complain by about a 16 roll, honestly. It was good enough. There's a Reclaim here instead of a Suffer, which is interesting to say the least. And now I am just gonna drop a puncture. Hopefully get the pull. I will appreciate it. No, I do not get a pull. I do not appreciate it. It's not the end of the world, honestly. It is annoying, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference. I mean, Lick Wounds will be available. The thing is, I can hit him from every position, despite him being in position 1 or position 3. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Well, I should definitely go for a Hounds Rush now. And there's a lot of things I have to counter right now. I have to counter the regen, which I didn't really have enough DOT to deal with that, because between Reclaim and the Battlefield Bandage, you don't, you don't really have the tools to deal with it. But it's alright, now there's gonna be a Hound Sari, but it's not the end of the world, because after this Hound Sari, I am gonna go for the pull. You got a debuff on my Occultist, that is preoccupying, uh, to say the least. Because I have 70% debuff res. Now the, what's gonna happen is, if you get a good heal with this Arbalist, my stab won't do enough damage. But you get a 10, which is a mineral, so I'm very much happy about that. Okay, don't let me down. 7 to 13. Oh, ho, 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 that's close. Oh god, that is very close. Alright. If I had failed that, uh, it would be a bit difficult to get the kill. I could still get it by the start of next round, because I, I was lucky enough to go first, but... It would still be difficult. I think Suffer here is... Wait, Suffer doesn't clear debuffs, does it? No, it doesn't. It would make a difference anyway. That was just a wasted move by, by my opponent, I believe. I don't think clearing the mark really does anything at all for you. Should have just gone for a punish on my occultist. 
But I think Yoshi is focusing way too hard on saving this doggy. Even though it's very important for you to save this doggy. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the highest skill chance. So we fail the 60 and we do not fail the 75. Thank goodness, because if you fail 75 there, you lose the match. Maybe. It j just depends on the following counts area. Yeah, you'd probably lose the match because then there's just way too much stress applied. So this is a matchup where WD sucks and where a team like this just absolutely thrives, honestly. That's uh, that's when it feels like at least this is not too bad at all of a team. So I could go for Pierce here. I could start focusing down the, the flat one if I really want to. Could also puncture on the Arbals, but it's a bit crazy, not gonna lie. Hmm, there's always so many moves you can do with a team like this. You should uh, really be on the lookout. I'm actually gonna drop an expose on the Man Arms. We might get some crits with oh, with something, and we're also doing a little bit of stress. I can't really just break through the flagellant at this point. I I want to put him in like that sweet spot of... Uh, where, where do you put it? A uh, sweet spot of like 15 HP or something, and there I'll be able to take him out with a finale. That would be great. But I have three, I have three bellow debuffs on my jester. How is that possible? My debuff resistance, where is it? And where are my flares as well? I, I don't see them anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna drop a Hansari here because that's gonna, it's gonna bleed everyone, and overall that is, uh, that is quite good. It's also gonna bleed the corpse, which is gonna maybe take it out earlier, but I don't think I did enough bleed to, to actually take it out at this point. But it's not the end of the world here. The Arbals can go for a few things, maybe a preemptive heal was an idea here, but it's going to be a suppressing fire, it's going to make me take more stress and make me deal less stress, so that's definitely preoccupying. I only have one Bell debuff there, so I can go for this. Do you have enough DOT? Yes, you have enough DOT to go down for Redeem. Flatron does not have Exsanguinate, has Suffer and Reclaim instead, which is honestly kind of fine in a team like this, I think. With the, with the two guards and with the Arbalest, it is kind of fine, it's just a little bit risky. Not uh, not having those extra three heals, so Yoshi says that was a misclick. And I'm wondering, did you misclick killing, clicking the Mana Arms? Did you misclick clicking Retribution? I have no idea, you shouldn't even have Retribution, so I don't know how that, uh, how that even happened, but... Oh well, I'm gonna go for the Hunt Rush here. If I force a Redeem out, it's perfectly fine for me because then the Flatrunt will be uh, will be dazed. And with him being dazed, he won't be able to drop the Redeem another time and I'll probably take him out that way. I'm gonna hover over these two characters and leave it at the Arbalest. And that's gonna make Yoshi think that you should go for the heal at the Arbalest. Nah, it failed. Damn it. Damn, uh, people have been haven't been falling for those quite as uh, quite as much anymore. You should definitely heal with the flagellant here, because if you don't, then you know I'm just gonna finale you on the spot. So <laughs> you don't want to let that happen, obviously. I think that here I might be going for a a stab first. Yeah, let's go for a stab. I do five to nine damage. It's definitely not very much, but considering I only have one debuff on my on my shield breaker, unless this is a crit 22, I should be fine to, to kill the flash on here, even with the finale. Oh, but I have three damage debuffs on me, how annoying. Also weird to go suppressing fire, I definitely feel like you have to save the flash because once he's gone, the men at arms and the arbals on their own don't really do all that much. I mean, the men at arms does, but the arbals at the end of the match, she, she sucks. She's here to keep the other characters alive, in a stress team that is. So I'm gonna go for the Pierce now, and uh, the finale should be a takeout, right? I mean, minus 60% damage. It's close, but we do we do take it. We had 9 to 16 there. 9 to 16, huh? I guess that it is additive then, because I had uh, essentially plus 60% damage on my finale, which plus 90% damage means 9 to 16, and plus 80% means 11 to 20, but considering there was prot, it makes sense that plus 60% would get kind of countered by the 10% prot, so it would go back down to 9 to 16. Kind of interesting when you when you think of it that way. Well, there is a repulse here, so Hans Zeri doesn't look quite as good, even though the repulse is meh. It still doesn't look quite as good. I could uh, heal myself, but that's not very cool. I could also go expose, which is quite cool. Uh, how much damage is Pierce? 6, 11, 3, 6. I'll do this and then get some more crits with my other abilities. I think that's overall better for, for me here. 
then do just go for the pierce with uh, with the damage debuff still on me. So yeah, let's do it, just that. It's gonna be a bowler right now, and yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. I was gonna drop to this or anyway, and me getting knocked back really doesn't accomplish anything for you. How many damage debuffs do I have? I have one. I have hopeless. I'm looking at it. Three to six or this. Uh, that's a very big crit chance. 43% crit chance. I gotta go for it. Yeah, it's, you get a crit for eight with that. That's really good. If you get a crit, Mr. Doggy, we might just get a knockout here. Oh, Mr. Doggy, you disappoint me. You really disappoint me. I could have dealt 25 damage there. I basically had sniper shot crit chance there, there because of the because of the expose. So sad that it didn't happen. Is it going to be a retribution turn? Like at this point, that's what you should be going for because you haven't dealt enough stress with uh, with the turns that you had to just guarantee a, a stress win here. So I feel like doing that would have been a good play. But since you didn't, I am probably just going to heal myself here. And I heal for 4 with the plus 25% healing skills. Who would have guessed that plus 25% doesn't really make too much of a difference if the heal heals like for, I don't know, 3 or something like that. Well, another bit of a greedy play doing that, but do I still have plus crits received on there? I think I do. Yeah, this should be a knockout. This should definitely be a knockout. Yeah, with the shield breaker here, I don't think there's any way you survive this. Doggy, don't let me down. You monkey, what are you doing? Dog, you absolute monkey, god damn it. And Master, so silly today, so freaking silly. Well, now I have to get a Pierce crit. Oh, it's not enough. It would be enough in the base game. In the base game, it's like 1.5% uh, damage or 1.5 times the damage or something. Where are my crits, dude? I have lost crits received on there. Yeah, my crits are, are long gone, Shep. Your crits are long gone. So yeah, even a team like this, which is going to do really well against specific sort of teams, like the damage teams that don't really have a way of dealing with the dodge, don't really have a way of dealing with all the regen, don't really have a way of dealing with the, um, with the dodge guards and the flares and the move resistances, those kinds of teams like WD, Sonic Special, even Hit Squad to some extent, are going to absolutely suffer, while a team like this, which at first glance looks like I'm trolling, doesn't suffer at all. It's it thrives in a in a matchup like this. So what would this team actually fail against? Well, probably stuns. I think would it fare well against WD? I don't think so, considering that there might be very decent amounts of dodge, also rip occultus. There might be very decent amounts of dodge on the Jester and the Shield Breaker, but the other two characters will have a lot of dodge. And honestly, if you if you're down a character against WD, with a thing that doesn't even have heals or stress, or too much stress that is, you are probably not going to win. I could go for 4 to 7 here, but ah, there's really no point. Let's just do this. And uh, that's gonna bring her down to Death Star. So yeah, against WD, you're Probably not gonna have too much of a fun time. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet. Against Halo, you're not gonna have too much of a fun time either, I don't think, because unless you get to go first and then drop a puncture on the Jester, the the enemy Jester and the Halo comp will be able to just drop Battle Battle and then your dodge, which is kind of your only one of your only defensive tools, isn't even gonna hold up, so that's not gonna be too much fun. But yeah, having, having dodge on these two gangs doesn't really matter if the other two die. I think Shep's stress would do really well against this as well, because uh, you could... No, I mean, maybe not. It depends. It does depend quite a bit. I'm gonna go for... Ooh, a stress act out. And I'm gonna go for the exam here. It does depend, because Shep's stress would be able to just do a lot of stress with the Hound's Airy. The Abomination could probably transform twice and uh, just apply massive amounts of horror, and the men at arms might stay alive for a bit, but at the same time, the doggy would probably get focused down very, very early, especially considering that Shep's stress doesn't have too many defensive tools for him, so he would probably be gone by round three. Even then, he'd probably have dropped three Hound series, but some of them could have missed because of the high amounts of dodge, even with command buffs, so you never know. And after the doggy goes down, without finale, you'll still have finale for the flagellant. So that, um, if you're up two characters against Shep's Stress and it's only the Men at Arms and the Abomination remaining, 
So Shep's Rest can definitely still win, but it is it is tricky. You kind of want to have the flagellant abomination at the end of the match, or flagellant men at arms, or like doggy and and men at arms. You don't want to have men at arms and a bomb. Those two don't really fit too well together at the end of the match, I don't think. At least it's not what you usually see. Well, the act outs are going wild right now, but it won't matter too much. I don't think this Mender Arms can win. It was definitely closer than I feel like it would be, because the Jester is almost out now. So I'd say that if um, if maybe that doggy survived for like one more turn and got one more health Harry off, this uh, this Shield Breaker could be at bigger amounts of stress because then my characters would have died earlier. Or it would have been more difficult for me to get kills. Things could be quite different here, but that's not what happened, that's not the reality we live in. So this team, should you play it? Definitely, definitely play it. Give it a try, it's really fun, it's really holistic, it's a very nice team to play. I think you can go wrong with it, but it's difficult to go wrong with this team. That's, that's my, my takeaway from it. Because you just have so many tools that you don't really have teams that you play against that you just feel like you're completely hopeless. So that's good. That is that is really quite good. Even if you play against the Immortal Comp, you know, with the Flagellant, Man at Arms, Abomination and Musketeer, you'll still probably be fine because between Shieldbreaker and Jester, you're definitely gonna get one kill. And if you get one kill, there's a lot of teams that suffer already. If you if you if they're at a character disadvantage, such as the Immortal Comp, it's a team that is very dynamic, so if you lose one character on it, you're essentially gonna lose the match. Yes, talking about losing matches, I don't think Yoshi here is going to last for too long, but as we all know, Yoshi is not a person that likes to surrender ever, even if the match is like 4 characters to 1. Now let me tell you, there are some situations where you do not want to do that. There's a person in, in China that plays the Immortal Comp, and you know what that person does? I'm going to tell you, because this is what has been told to me. It's the person that came up with the Tiger Finger name for the Brass Knuckles, because of some uh, translation funny shenanigans. And what that person does, if you do not surrender and they've already clearly won the match, what they do is instead of just instead of just you know playing to win, they just take their immortal comp. Which let's have a let's have a quick look at it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you all know what the immortal team looks like. It's a very very annoying team to play against. Uh, it looks somewhat like this. And what they do is if you do not surrender, they will keep spamming the ranging shot on the Musketeer, they'll bring all their characters to zero stress, they'll bring all their characters to full HP, and they will just sit there. Even if it takes like 10 turns, 15 turns, they will do that, and you will suffer. They will suffer as well, but the people that play this team don't really care too much about spending too much time in the Witcher Circus, because some matches are going to go to round 40, most matches are going to go to round 20, if you win, you have to go to round 20 to win with a team like this. Of course, not with the trinkets and abilities I have right now. Apart from the flash on, this is the correct one. Uh, but yeah, it is a team that would kind of get countered by the market cultists I had over there. Kind of. Kind of. So if you do want to play it, you can have a pretty fun time. Unless you go against the OED, then it's going to be a bit of a toss-up. You need to get a kill on the Bounty Hunter early with a Jester Finale, or else you're just going to have a really rough time as well. So I might be playing this team again. I hope to see it some more in on the ladder, because it's definitely a cool one making some of these crazy, wacky teams, especially when they work. So yeah, I'll see you again another time. Cheers.